Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Happy Model Larva. This is another sort of micro light, hyper light, toothpick, twig, power light, whatever you want to call these now. It seems to me that micros have just changed. In the last six months, micros have just changed. Everything we're flying is smaller, it's lighter, it's higher performing. And we have a lot more options to build. We don't just have one flight controller and one motor and one prop. We've got all sorts of options. But let's take a look at this one and its combination and how it flies. Features the Crazy B F4 Pro version 3 flight controller that has a 10 amp ESC, the Runcam Nano 2 FPV camera, the Happy Model Diamond VTX, which also has onboard SD recording. VTX is power switchable up to 200 milliwatt. Happy Model 1103 7000 KV motors, running Emax Avon two and a half inch props. Flight controller has a built-in receiver. Specs say it can be in D8 or D16 mode. I use D8. Motor post to motor post, I am getting 100 millimeters. Bottom plate looks like it's three millimeters thick. All these different braces appear to be about two millimeters thick. Looks like we have more material around the motor mounting screws. This busted up canopy is far from final. And every time I flew it, I forgot to record to the SD card. Mine weighs 49 and a half grams. I flew it on this GNB 3S 520 milliamp battery, which weighs 42 and a half grams. For your reference, this 3S 450 milliamp tattoo battery weighs a little over 40 and a half grams. And this old GNB 3S 450 weighs 48 and a half grams. So the 520 GNB weighs less than the old 450 GNB, and the tattoo 450 is only three grams less than the 520 GNB. So the flight I'm going to show you is not my best flight by any stretch, but I kept breaking the canopy all the time and I kind of got tired of fixing it and I lost a piece the last breakage and I thought, okay, this is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to pick a flight from what I have and we're just going to run with it. So you're going to get to see me get quite sloppy. You're going to get to see me miss a couple lines. It'll be just a hoot, won't it? As we hit this punch out, listen to the props. You can almost hear the props get to a point at the top end that they're just not reaching what seems to be the maximum. And I think that's the reason why I like to include sound is it tells me a little bit about my own flight and hopefully it tells me, it tells you something about your flight as well. Uh, so this little quad is, uh, it's got a lot of the features that I think most people are looking for. So you've got a VTX that goes up to 200 milliwatt. You can record the SD card, which I apologize, I'm not showing you, but I will be. A little bit later, I am going to give you some footage and you're gonna say, well, how'd you do that? Because you broke the canopy. Well, I'm gonna fix the canopy with a different canopy and then I'm gonna go out and fly it again and I'm gonna give you a little sample of that flight footage. A little bit of warning about that. I believe that records in 1280 by 720 uh, resolution. So it's a little bit widescreen. So it's not the typical uh, 4.3 that we're used to. And also the SD card does not have any of the OSD information, which I think for many of you is kind of flight critical information so you can see the throttle position, you can see the battery sag, you can see the uh, current sensor and its activity and as well as the flight time. Rather than having to ask about the flight time or me having to put some text over the top of the video about the flight time itself. Uh, hopefully you understood from me weighing all the batteries the reason why I went with the battery I want because at, at 2 grams and to get 70 more milliamps of power to be able to use in the flights that I want to, and in a flight like I like to fly, uh, that's where I found myself. You can use a lighter battery and you'll find yourself gain a little bit of agility. Uh, you might find that your flight time goes down by as much as 40 seconds, depending upon how you fly. Again, we kind of covered the how you fly thing in the cream puff video. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I'll be glad to answer them. Of course, this is only up on pre-sale or pre-order and I believe the price is $97. I don't think you can get it or use any coupons on that, so that is the flat price. Ah, and here we go. Now I'm bailing out of these runs. I'm gonna go try it again. Now you might say, why don't you just correct in midair and then hit the hole? Well, I would do that, but I like to kind of hit it clean, and so usually what I have to do is uh, I have to practice a little bit with the quad so I kind of get that launch angle just right. And on the particular day, if the wind direction changes, uh, that can also throw me offline a little bit. Uh, so Happy Model is going to change a few things. So the canopy, like I said, is far from final. Uh, they're getting a, I've been told, a press molded canopy. They're also going to use steel screws uh, in the flight stack, which is a good thing. I also encourage them to hard mount it. Now, some of you may disagree with me, but I have found that if you don't hard mount, you oftentimes end up with jello on aggressive flight with the TPU canopy. But if it's hard plastic, it might be okay. There we have our end result OSD. I went a little bit too far on the battery. So like I said, I apologize that I didn't have that SD card. I, I got about a dozen flights in with this and my canopy has just had it. And another point about using nylon screws, it's actually putting stress on this canopy. As you can see, it's kind of bowed out on this side over here. Hopefully you can see that it's fairly clear. Uh, so it's the 
canopy is actually holding these nylon screws together. So you've got to have a pretty rigid and pretty good canopy in order to uh, make this all kind of work. And of course, if you have a hard enough crash, you could even uh, break your nylon standoff. So that, that's a bad thing because if you get your VTX components uh, in contact with your flight controller, you could end up with a short and some sadness. Uh, they do route the wires underneath. That gives you a slight opportunity that if that were to happen, that the VTX would come to rest on the wires and not touch other components that are powered on in your crash. I do applaud them for the design. It looks like it's make use a little bit of that cube design, or at least it does to me a little bit. And a point made on the cream puff video, uh, this sucker, if you get it stuck in a tree, might be a pretty serious challenge getting it out because you get a branch up through there and it's really only gonna wanna come out one way, which is back off that branch up. Uh, so these, you know, tri-blades act like a grappling hook in a tree anyways. Now you can kind of multiply that factor by a couple of degrees with all these particular holes. So if you're uh, afraid of climbing trees or you're afraid of getting stuck in trees, uh, that's something to note. You could, I suppose, you could cover this with tape but that's really gonna change its flight characteristics quite a bit. I like the fact that they've uh, used the Avan props. I think the Avan props probably didn't get their due until here in the last couple months we're seeing more models come out with that. I'm a little surprised the 7,000 KV because I was using the 8,000 KV in my test and my cream puff, and I thought the 8,000 KV motors were pretty good. You do get slightly, slightly, it's very small bit of additional motor response in the low end, and I don't feel like I miss a lot on the top end. I'm just surprised because I wasn't aware of these 7,000 kV motors were even available. We've got the VTX. I was flying it on 200 milliwatts, so you have to judge whether that VTX with my rapid fire module were doing an adequate job of showing you the flight footage rather than break up. The battery strap that it comes with is, of course, a budget battery strap on a budget quad. I think if we were to pay more, maybe we should expect a different one. Hopefully you have the battery strap that you prefer to use in your bin. I always cut off the big end because I really don't like having that in there and also uh, before the video I took off my battery mounting pad that's the URUAV sticky stuff it's kind of a knockoff of the UmaGrip it's not nearly as good as UmaGrip but it does work quite well uh, just not as well as the UmaGrip you note that they took off the capacitor it's because they've increased their ESC overhead uh, you could see the ESC stats uh, on screen or the amp draw on screen throughout the flight and on the end screen results if you wanted to go back and look at that. Here's a little bit of flight footage from the SD card so that you can uh, get a view of that. I think I've kind of gotten used to having the, the flight stats, the OSD stuff on screen. I, I think I have a bias against not having that. I've gotten so used to flying micros with that OSD stuff over the last couple years that I kind of miss it. Um, but, of course, when we're flying it, we get to see that stuff. And if you wanted to show somebody a flight that didn't have that stuff in it, which would be more appealing to the masses, so people who weren't necessarily familiar with the quad or quad racing or freestyling space, they might find that much more interesting. So that's that's a bonus feature, but you have to judge whether that's a big bonus or a little bonus or no bonus. This VTX does weigh one gram more than the VTX that does not have the SD card. So that's something to consider. If you wanted to drop an extra gram when you get yours, uh, you could swap out that VTX. I think it costs about 16 or $17. I might be wrong on that price. I'll put on screen how much the standard VTX costs. The stock tune that it came with, I didn't care for. So I did my own tune, which you see on screen. Also the filters, the filter I did not tinker with. That's how it came to me as well. The power settings I did not agree with. Oftentimes I find quads when they come through Banggood or something of that nature that the power settings have been adjusted down. If they've done anything to beta flight they've adjusted the power settings down and that does give you a longer flight but it also puts your battery in peril when you get it down below 3.5 volts per cell. Uh, so I would pump that buck up to a, a minimum warning of 3.4 volts per cell. The beta flight version that it's running is the uh, 404 so you do have version 4 on there and I was a little bit surprised at the tune I was able to get out of this so uh, that may be a combination that works pretty well. I don't know about 405. I haven't tried that yet. So this little ripper is pretty good fun. I'm a little bit concerned about the canopy. That's always an area I'm kind of hesitant to endorse it because we don't know what the final product is going to be like. It's a lot of fun. It depends on if the canopy adds a bunch of weight that's going to decrease its performance and for me it would decrease the fun. But I don't think it will add too much weight because I've been weighing some other canopies that I have and some are molded plastic. And I can't see it adding more than a gram or two at most. So I have a good feeling that this will be a pretty good performer. 
I also think that the way they've built the frame and the thickness of the frame, it should hold up pretty well. But as with all things, it kind of depends on what you're crashing into and how fast you're doing it. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching. I got a major foofty going on there.